This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Oh my god, I have a new favorite film stock. <laughs> saturated but not to the extent of ectar it's flattering on skin tones and it's just all around gorgeous <sighs> if only fuji didn't discontinue it back in 2012 surviving it with pro 400 h that's also just being discontinued so safe to say i will be sticking with my previous favorite film ectar but only because it's actually available so what is this film stock you may be asking it is fuji riala ace 100 Riala. or maybe it's riala or Riala? Riala? I don't know. So Fuji Riala Ace 100, otherwise known as Fuji Superior in most countries, was a film aimed at professionals and enthusiasts due to its color accuracy, fine grain, and sharpness. Because of these characteristics, Fuji Riala was a popular one amongst wedding photographers. Matthew Joseph, a friend and fellow film shooter, sent me an email with some shots that he took on Riala in 2013. Matt said, I shot these on my Mamiya 7 and a 43 millimeter lens and eight out of the 10 frames were bangers. Love that. Riala was a super dependable film. You knew that the results would be good as long as the camera and the meter behaved themselves. Riala was also one of the first rolls of film I ever shot in an SLR. I also used to shoot weddings professionally on Riala. It just worked and skin tones looked great. The lovely Patrick J. Clark also sent through an email as he is a big lover of Riala. So thank you for these photos. He said, like you, I really, really dig Riala and I'm sad that it's no longer made. Ektar is very punchy and larger than life, but Riala tones it down just a bit in the skin tones while still being vibrant. I could not agree more. And it was the first Fuji film to have that fourth color layer that made 400H so popular. So it was a long weekend and we went to a beautiful spot just south of the Gold Coast. It wasn't the sunny day I had hoped for, but I was determined to try out this film in my OM10. We stopped off at Hastings Point, which is a really beautiful location. And I took a few shots here. I'm not normally a lover of landscapes as I struggle to kind of find a composition that I think is interesting or suits my style, but I did get a few shots here and I'm liking this one of the man sitting on the rocks here. Lux decided to take a portrait of me and as he did, it started pelting down with rain. So we ran back to the car and this kind of set the tone for the rest of the day. Honestly, it just kept raining. Next up, we went to Kingscliff, which is a coastal town, and I found this really cool old motel. I got a couple of shots around here, and whilst I do like some of them, I am a little bit bummed out that I wasn't more conservative with my shots. Knowing how much I love this film, I probably would take back a lot of these shots. I had been told by numerous people that this film was really great, but I just didn't really understand how much I was going to fall in love with it. So the rain persisted, and we drove back up the coast and stumbled across this cool boat harbour that was really dead because it was a public holiday. Here is where I feel I really got my best shots and these are the ones that made me really fall in love with Riala. There were some really great compositions to be had here and different colours of the boats were so nice, especially the red. I am a huge lover of red in my photography and whilst I do love Ektar and it is my favourite film, sometimes the colours of Ektar can be so 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 vibrant. This Riala film just tones that down just a little bit, but with enough punch that you're still really making the color the focal point of the photo. It's a very fine grain film, which is something that I really like. That's why I like Ektar. And it has this sort of like creaminess to the whites. And oh, it's just, I, I can't fault this film at all. It is just perfect. Huge shout out to PC, who is in Brisbane. He sent me about four rolls of film. One of them was the Metropolis, which I have shot and loved. And the other was this Riala film. PC is a huge fan of this film and he bought it off a guy who had quite a big stash of it frozen and stored correctly. So due to it being frozen and also it being a 100 speed film, I didn't need to compensate at all and I just shot it at box speed. So whilst this film is technically expired, it's basically like fresh film and I think you can really see that in the results. There's no weird color shifts or anything and it just looks so I was feeling really defeated by the weather and worried that I wouldn't even be able to finish this roll off. 
but when we pulled into the harbour and I saw all these colours, my eyes just lit up. And I think it's funny how one location can just totally change a role. I took maybe 15 photos here and it just changed the whole experience. Color and photography are really important to me, and they're also important to Sophia Carey, who was my latest guest on Lucy Lumen's podcast adventure. Sophia and I talked about how to become an entrepreneur in the photography sphere in 2022, and she had lots of tips on all her different income streams and what she does to make money in photography. One of Sophia's ventures is online courses through Skillshare, who coincidentally are today's sponsor. I'm currently working my way through Sophia's course on how to use color to enhance your photography. Sophia breaks down color theory, color psychology, and how to put this all into practice on location in a shoot. Sophia also takes this course all the way from conception to Lightroom editing and the techniques that she uses to enhance her photography. With so many of us loving color film nowadays, I think this course is a must to bring out the most in your color shots. Skillshare is a great resource for freelancers or entrepreneurs to learn new skills or even make a career pivot. Skillshare has thousands of ad-free courses to help you level up your skills and support that growing side hustle you have been wanting to take to the next level. Sure, you can find videos on YouTube, but with Skillshare, you have thousands of courses ad-free across so many genres, allowing you to stay in the zone. So I'm excited to tell you that Skillshare are offering you a whole free month so you can browse all of the courses they have to offer. The first 1,000 people to use the link below or my code will get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. Link is in the description and there is also a pinned comment with that link. So we did get a few portraits at the end and some of them are a little bit out of focus, unfortunately. If we knew how great the skin tones were with this film, we probably would have been a little bit more considered and slowed down. But in the ones that did turn out, you can see the skin tones are very true to life and very flattering. So I would love for Fuji to bring this film back, which is probably not gonna happen no matter what I say or do but I'm happy that we have any film to shoot. Sometimes I think we do romanticize discontinued film stocks or just film photography in general, as we tend to be quite sort of nostalgic people. We're still using this very antiquated version of photography and it is dwindling in supply, but that's kind of the allure of it as well. So whilst Riala is my perfect idea of a film stock, I think I do love it even more because I can't have it. I will be keeping an eye out for some on eBay if people are selling it for a reasonable price, but expired films are going up in price. Without knowing how they're stored, it can be quite a gamble as well. Whether rebadged or not, we've seen a few films resurrected this year, and I guess you never know what's gonna happen with film, but I think the future looks bright. But Fuji, if you're listening, which you're probably not, if you do ever bring back a film stock, please make it Riala. A few months back, I did a little survey of the film community's favorite film stocks of all time. So if you haven't seen that video, then click the link coming up.